this is a quick tip on how you can deal with error handling in TypeScript when you have, for example, a try catch block. So what we need to do anyway is we need to deal with errors. It doesn't work, so we need to know what the error is, right? So here we can wrap this in a try catch block. So I'm going to put everything in try catch. So then if this this send uh, method throws an error, we can catch that error so we can see what's going on. So we can say catch the error and then just like here we can return an object with an error and we want to see what the error is so we ideally could do error.message right so if send the, re the recent throws an error we catch it here and we want to get its message now typescript is going to complain because if we hover this error is of type unknown right so this error here that we get is basically uh, type unknown which actually makes a lot of sense because technically this you can throw anything in JavaScript, right? So you can throw, you can throw the number five, right? You can throw that. So technically the send method could throw the number five. So we catch five here, and then we try to do five.message, but message, message doesn't exist on the number five, right? So you can throw a new error in JavaScript, new error, test error, and now you can actually get message, right? This will give us an object with a message property, but we don't know if they actually, if they actually throw something that was created with new error, right? Now they may actually also just throw a normal JavaScript object with error or message. And so we don't really know what they throw if something goes wrong. So let's see, we can just do a bunch of if statements so we can check if we can check if it actually has a message property. And so we can check if this error, if this actually is an instance of error. So in JavaScript, we have this error constructor, new error, right, message. If you do this, you will get an error object with message property, right? So we can check if whatever this third party, whatever, whatever they threw, is that actually an instance of that error constructor? Well, in that case, yeah, we can just use error.message, right? That's not a problem. And we actually saw that they give us an error. We actually saw that they give us an object. Um, I'm not sure if I can still find it, but it was somewhere here. It was actually an object. Now, that was actually not an object. That wasn't actually specifically an instance of error. That was just, you know, they just, they just, they just created an object literal with message and status code, right? It wasn't, it wasn't created with new error. So now, it's not going to go, it's not going to return that because here we're only checking for if it's actually an instance of the error constructor. So here we can also check else if the error, whatever, whatever, whatever is thrown, if it's, if it's actually, uh, if the type of this is actually an object, right, strictly equal to object and it has that message um, in that object. So you can write it like this. You can check if the message property name is in the error. Right, so you can use it, you can write it like this. And now we get an issue because it's saying that error could also be null. You cannot check if something is in null. So initially here, what we can also check if the error is even existing. So if error exists and the type of that error is an object and there is a message in that object, then we can also return error.message. Right? We TypeScript won't give us an issue here because we know now it's going to be an object with a message property. Now this is getting quite, uh, you know, you can already sense here, because now what we also want to do is what if the what if they're not throwing an object? Maybe they're actually throwing a string. Maybe they're actually just throwing the message itself. Right? Maybe they're just throwing that. And now we're not we're not dealing with that here, right? Because that's not going to be an instance of error. It's not going to be an object. So now we're just losing that. So now we have another else. We can check if it's a string and just use that as the message. So here at this point, it's probably best that we extract this into a helper function. Right, because we're going to have to deal with errors in other server actions and throughout our application as well. Might as well extract this into a separate function. So what we want to be able to do, we're going to put all of this stuff in a separate function. And ultimately, we, we just want to get the message basically. So here we're just going to return an object. And what we want to do here is we want to call a function. Let's call it get error message and just pass that error. And that, and that function will then just figure out what the uh, message is. So let's copy all of this and remove that from here. This is much cleaner now, and we're going to extract this logic out to um, a, a helper function here. We'll call that get error message. That will take in that error and it will extract some message from it. So indeed, it's going to be an error of type unknown. 
and I copied that so I can paste that here, what we had before. Right, so this will just return a message. So let's actually, let's just create a message here. And this should be of type string, right? So we want to return a message of type string and that's what we're going to return here, return message. Right, so this message will then be the error here. So we'll be, we'll be here in this object error and then that message. Right, so this function should return a string. Right, let's make that explicit here. Okay, so now we don't want to return some objects here. We just want to return uh, error.message here. Right, so we just extract error.message, or not, not return, we want to assign it to a message. Right, so then here we'll say uh, message is error.message as well. All right, we get an issue here. Type unknown is not assignable to type string. Okay, so this is really, really advanced. So here we're saying if error exists and it's actually an object and it has that message property. So for example, if they throw an error with, well, it could just be message, but invalid sender email. So this, in this case, we could, we could get error.message, right? Now, technically they could throw something like this. So they could throw an error that exists, right? And is of type error as object and message also exists. Message is an error. But then it's actually a number type. And here we're saying it should be a string. Right? So if we really, <laughs> this is really uh, advanced, we can say, well, we're going to cast that to a string. So we can wrap whatever they give us in the string, what we get from JavaScript, and this will convert whatever that is to a, to a string. Right? So this is getting a bit uh, advanced. Uh, I'm not sure if I should have included that in this tutorial. But this is easy to pick up once you've mastered JavaScript itself, right? So I'll keep hammering on this, how important that is. And this is, this is the real world. You need to deal with errors properly. All right, now what if they throw, not an object, but for example, they throw just a string in a valid email. Now we're not checking for that. Here we're only checking for instance of error object and actually it's just a normal object. But we can also check if it's a string. So we can also check type of error. If that is strictly equal to string, then we can just use message is just that error, right? It's going to be a string. So we can just use that. And else, if all of that doesn't give us a message, or if, the, if, if all of that uh, do, doesn't pass the test of the if block, we'll just have a default error here, right? So then we weren't able to extract it from whatever they threw. So here we're just going to say unknown error, or typically people call this something went wrong. And so ultimately, this get error message uh, helper function always gives us some message that we can then use here in the catch block. And it's nice that we have extracted this into a separate function because now if we have another file, another server action, you know, you have to deal with errors all over the place. So you can just reuse this. And let's actually put that in the utils uh, file as well. So let's copy this. And let's put that here in the utilities file. And make sure you also export it. We're going to export this. And then we're going to import this. Get error message. That's not much cleaner and this is much more uh, professional. By the way, if this was helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. Also, check out my courses on CSS and JavaScript if you want to take those skills to an advanced level. Because in there, we will build some beautiful real-world projects from scratch so you can see how everything fits together and really master CSS or JavaScript. And I will also release other courses soon like React and Node.js. So if you want to be notified, then make sure you are subscribed to the email newsletter. You can find the link in the description. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you soon.